Let's compare Sunbelt Athletic Budgets. It's locked on Sunbelt. You are locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right, as soon as I said that intro, and I think I got a fly in here. Uh, As soon as I said that intro, I was like, well, that's not the most exciting intro. But I think... And a lot of people like this stuff because I've been seeing people comment on it and seeing what uh, the difference is uh, between the schools. All right. So this is Tony Altimore. Tony Altimore, who put this together. He's on Twitter. TJ Altimore, uh, strategy and analytics consultant. All right. He's going to USC, Wharton. All right. Former CIA agent. All right. Uh, You know whatever the case may be. So we'll take his word for it that these numbers, for the most part, are uh, accurate, all right? And it is amazing on how, you know, some of these schools are have a lot of money, some do not, all right? And um, percentage-wise is huge. So if you go from, we'll just say Alabama to Mississippi State, all right. What do we think that is? So Alabama is 212 million. Mississippi State is 121. So what 90 million is the difference. All right. You do take that to the Sun Belt and Monroe, which has actually had a pretty good year under my guy John Hartwell, um, 21 million. Just over 21 million. Compare that to James Madison, which is 68. So James Madison is more than three times the athletic budget that Monroe is. Whereas now you, if you want to include Texas in the SEC moving forward, uh, they're up to 132 million. That's almost double to 121. Almost, not quite, almost double. But that's $100 million in between. So, So when we hear... Right. And some of the point of this is when we hear, well, South Alabama. Right. And this is what Josh Pate used as the example. South Alabama at thirty five and thirty five million isn't playing the same game as Alabama is. That's true. Right. There's almost two hundred million dollars difference. But. Either is Mississippi State. Right. You can go to I mean, what's Vanderbilt? I'm kind of surprised Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is right there with Mississippi State, one hundred twenty five million. They have different priorities. So we'll talk more about the Sun Belt here in a second. So, but part of that is, is that some of these schools, and remember the SEC, Mississippi State, a good chunk of that 50 million or so, right? 45, 50 million is coming right from the SEC network. Boom, right? And you go to the ACC, Notre Dame's at 200 million because that's the NBC contract, all right? And part of this thing, which is cool, is they used to, you know, like the USA Today only gets the athletic budget for the public schools. So you got Notre Dame in there and, you know, my orange, which is way at the bottom, you know, not even 100 million, 90, 94 million. So Sunbelt, let's rank uh, the Sunbelt teams. Well, he ranks them for me. I'll see if I can read it sideways. And I guess I could put on my glasses. I'm not sure if that's going to help. All right. I got bifocals. No, that's not going to help. Okay. Uh so James Madison is 68 million. Old Dominion is 54 million. I mean, that's those are a lot of money. I mean, that's even, you know, again, Old Dominion is second. That's still, you know, not quite, you know, 150% more than Monroe. App State, surprisingly, is 46 million. Coastal is 45. Uh, I am rounding to the nearest million, I guess. Uh, Marshall is 45. Texas State is almost 44. The Cajuns are 42. Be interesting to know, and we'll get to this here in a second. I don't want to harp on this, but it it is a thing. Uh, Georgia State is 37. 
Uh, South Alabama is 36. Georgia Southern is uh, 35 and a half or so. Troy is 34. Arkansas State is 33. Southern Miss, I'm surprised, is 30. And Monroe is 21. All right. So some of this, because I wonder about this. Um, forget about what the reported attendances, right? Because there was a big thing uh, last week. Someone put up about Georgia Southern's attendance, and they didn't look like they drew all that well to the Cajun series. That was a big series. They're on, they're on fire. Georgia Southern's on fire. You're bringing in the big, bad Cajuns, and, you know, they look like they had okay crowds, but certainly not like third in the conference or something like that. Um, and I even wondered, you know, when the Cajuns were drawing, you know, 15 to 20,000 of football, like how are they paying for this? How, how is everyone, how is this all getting paid? And is it student fees? Who is covering all this? And we find out the Cajuns are $8 million in the hole. <laughs> so right now, nobody. Uh, so it is interesting, uh, these deals. And so James Madison looking to, you know, add to their football stadium. I suggest don't go too big too fast. That's just my suggestion. Have that demand. Always have that demand in there a little bit. I'd, I'd rather, I would rather build it a little bit too small than a little bit too big. Um, because what, because, you know, the sport has changed. I, you know, it'd be interesting to go back. I, I'm not sure. You know what? We had some TV. I don't know if it was every TV game. I think TV games were special. Like, like we used to have a dozen TV games or something like that for, for baseball and softball. Not every game was done uh, here for the Cajuns. And I got a chance to do some. Uh, and it was like a really special occasion. And now people can sit home. And it is another subscriber's fee. It is, you know, six, six, seven, maybe $10 a month now. But that's not tickets. That's not food, right? It, it's just cheaper to, to be at home. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how this money affects everything. Um, you had people talking about why, you know, Georgia Southern actually draws about, a, and has a million or so more than Troy, but Troy seems to win and Georgia Southern uh, doesn't, right? The Cajuns uh, have two top 25 of the more expensive clubs in baseball and softball, but can't seem to do it in, in basketball. Um, football, I think is a cyclical thing, right? And that, that, and, and everyone's still trying to get a grasp on that, to be honest with you. Uh, so I just find this, I just find it interesting. Uh, Dimitri Ravenos from, uh, uh, Barrett sports media wrote on it. Cause I always thought that eventually the money was going to run out. We're finding the money is not going to run out somewhere along the way. We think it will, but uh, it's not happening anytime soon. Uh, not with the NFL, not with the NBA, not with college sports. We, I just, it just doesn't seem like it is going to run out uh, anytime soon. All right. Um, so what these budgets mean, you know, maybe James Madison can pay assistant coaches more, pay a head coach more. I don't know if it makes a difference between, you know, are you going to stick around, you know, an, ex an extra contract? Or are you not going to move on? Right. Kurt Segnetti went to Indiana. Kurt's not that young, right? He's not a spring chicken. Right. He's not up and coming. Right. Um, you know, Tim Beck, we'll see. Right. If he gets if he has a great year with Coastal Carolina, does he take off? He's not a spring chicken. I think he's younger than Kurt Signetti, but, you know, he may have one shot at this or. You can spend the next decade uh, limited up in Conway, South Carolina, not the not the worst place uh, to do that. So um, it is interesting to see these. I think the one I'm most surprised about is Southern Miss. And I'm really impressed with App State. Now, I think I knew about James Madison. I'll kind of suppressed. I probably shouldn't be surprised with Old Dominion. They probably have the biggest population of anybody. Maybe San Marcos, maybe the Texas State area. But I think Old Dominion because of, I mean, that used to be the biggest area without a major league franchise. Uh, so there's a lot of money there. And then the way they, they get their money, whether it's just, you know, through the athletics or is it from the student body? I think there's, a, I think James Madison has a huge fee. If that's not the case, please let me know. Well, not a huge fee, but you know, a little bit of a fee and it's all the students paying it. So uh, that helps out with that, 
that stuff. So uh, some some pe- places do a, a lot with less. Obviously, Troy is doing uh, a lot with less. Southern Miss trying to uh, to do a lot with less. The Cajuns are smack dab in uh, the middle. So, uh, but that is out there, and you can again find these numbers, and it's on. I'll, I'll put it on the graphic for the video. Um, and Tony uh, Altimore, uh, TJ Altimore on Twitter. Okay, uh, let's take a time out. Uh, one of the great names in college sports transfers to ULM. We'll talk about that next, right after I tell you about FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA, NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot at to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports bet. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. We'll look at the baseball uh, regular season series finales coming up uh, beginning tonight. Uh, but first, big news, uh, General Axel Booty is transferring to uh, ULM, okay? Um, nephew of John David Booty and, excuse me, and uh, Josh Booty, all right? He is well uh, traveled. <laughs> he was born. He is. Uh, he's twenty two right now. Born February sixth of two thousand and two, and he is well traveled. They're very excited about him up there, coming from Oklahoma. So that's a big deal. He was a three star recruit, according to twenty four seven Sports. All right, uh, but he has been around. He went to Corona Del Mar High School in Newport Beach as a freshman in 2017. Uh, Apparently, the folks moved, went to Cornerstone Christian School in San Antonio as a sophomore. Then Sarah Catholic High in San Juan Capistrano, California. Maybe the parents split up. Uh, And then in 20, he went to Allen High, where he threw for, had a pretty good senior year. Uh, 22, 35, 26 touchdowns, had nine touchdowns on the ground. Okay. Then he went to Tyler junior college in 21, uh, played one time for Oklahoma in 2022 against TCU and one time in 2023, uh, in the 73, nothing blowout of Arkansas state. So he has not played a whole lot. Um, in major college football. So, uh, but they are very excited. Apparently they think they have their quarterback uh, at ULM. All right. Um, I, I love, <laughs> you gotta love the name. Again, according to Wikipedia, it's not on his OU thing. Let me see if it is on his OU uh, thing here. Um, personal, no. It does not say, it just says general booty, which is outstanding. On Wikipedia, though, it does have General Axel Booty. So that's a great name. And maybe he'll be the guy. The thing is, he's way behind now. He's transferring to ULM. And we've seen, who was it? It was uh, Dan Orlowski, right, from ESPN. And I think it was Chase Daniels showing his Saints book about what it is to, to learn one play. Right? Chase Daniels was like, look at this one play and breaking it down. Uh, and what these rookies are going through. And now uh, Booty is not going to have, doesn't get spring ball. So he's going to have to learn this stuff on his own. Teammates helping him or something along those lines. Um, Now, right? Now he does have May, June. He's got two and a half months to learn it. All right. So that's not nothing, right? But he's not going to have a chance to, I'm sure he's just going to have the wide receivers, right? And the running backs with him. Maybe he'll get the offensive line. Maybe he'll have his own little spring practice, you know, uh, with workouts. I think everyone's gone for uh, a few weeks, wrapping up finals, uh, get a little break from spring 
uh, some time at home and then come back and start working out. And so maybe he'll hold. He doesn't need the defense so much as he just needs the basics for the uh, the position. So we'll see if he's the guy. We're kind of looking at, um, I guess I, I may have done this on uh, the Schultz cast, but let's see the ULM uh, schedule. ULM football schedule. It usually is, you know, a little, <laughs> a little rough, but maybe not. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, twenty twenty four. All right. Um, it is certainly not easy. Oh boy. Okay. They start out at home with Jackson State, and then they start at home with UAB. That's not bad. All right. Um, you get to break it in with Jackson State. Then you get UAB. All right. You get them at home. Then you're at Texas. That's not going to be easy, obviously. Quinn Ewer is probably the Heisman, uh, leading Heisman candidate returning. Uh, and then you're at Troy and the Sun Belt starts. I mean, you are, there's not really a, an easy ball game. ULM is the easy ball game in the Sun Belt, right? But you're at Troy, home against St. James Madison, against Southern Miss. At South, at Marshall, Texas State at home. He throws in Auburn in there at Auburn, at Arkansas State. They do finish home uh, against the rival Cajuns. So the question is, he, you know, if it is uh, General Booty getting the start at the season, he does have a couple of games. We'll see what UAB is uh, with Trent Dilfer, I think, heading into his third year. I think Trent is heading into his third year. Uh, at UAB, oh, but that was the big news in the conference on on Wednesday. And again, one of the great names in college football. But I got a, I I I ran into Josh Booty back in the day. I remind him about this. I I trolled him accidentally. Honest to God, he I was the broadcaster for the Peoria Chiefs. He was call. Uh, he was playing third base for the Kane County Cougars. He was a great guy. Great guy. I, you know, I'm 25 or so, 26. And he's like 19. Great kid. And uh, it was a little rainy, a little chilly in Peoria. So I just pulled out a sweatshirt out of my car and it was LSU. I probably knew it when I did it, but I certainly didn't do it on purpose in terms of, oh, let's put the LSU sweatshirt in the car. Because <coughs> uh, Josh Booty will be there. So that's my brush with uh, Josh Booty like some 30 odd years ago. Uh, and he was a, he was a really, he was a really nice kid. Uh, still a nice man to this day. I should mention he comes on the show basically whenever I ask him and, uh, we wish his nephew, uh, the best of luck at UL. All right, let's take a time out. We got one more regular season series to talk about baseball wise. And it's starting tonight, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Cajuns looking to wrap things up. Others still looking to get in to the postseason tournament. We'll be back, uh, after, uh, this, uh, time out. So thank you. All right, we're, we're moving on up, all right? As, uh, as the Jefferson said, we got uh, 1,220 subscriptions. I mean, I think we got a pretty good shot at getting 1,500 by the time the summer rolls around. We'll see. We could use, you know, a little, you know, uh, regional and super regional love, if that's the case. God, could you only imagine if Southern Miss made the College World Series last year? Numbers would have really skyrocketed. So we need a little help. Certainly, that's the case. I'd... Um, the more we have to talk about than, you know, pulling topics out and giving my opinion. I love, I love recapping the games and, and talking and reacting to that. So the longer that can go, the better we'll talk softball, uh, tomorrow. And I think that's a big deal as three Sunbelt teams are in the regionals, but we're looking forward to it and really appreciate everybody that has, um, subscribe. Please tell more and more. We Keep on getting comments. I'm the person, you know, commenting. If, if you reply on Facebook, that'll be me. Uh, if you see if it's from Lockdown Sunbelt and same goes for uh, YouTube. I, I'm the person who does the replying. So I appreciate it. I will answer almost all the questions. All right. Um, you know, uh, that's me. I'm the one replying. So I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Don't forget 
Uh, it is on Apple and Spotify as well. So you can always listen to it if you can't watch it on the YouTube. Really do appreciate it. We have a drive for 1500 uh, by August 31st. That is the goal. All right. We'll see if we can do that. Uh, let's get back to it. Let's talk a little college baseball on Lockdown Sunbelt. Excuse me. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, let's wrap up the uh, regular season in baseball. Uh, it's a big one with the Cajuns hosting South Alabama. Not exactly sure about the whole Matt Diggs talking about dogpiling thing about we, we want to, you know, figuring they're going to win one. You hope that's the case uh, if you're the Cajuns. Uh, and you know, probably gonna win, you know, you kind of at home, you kind of hope for two out of three, and you want to set the tone uh immediately. Speaking of that, let's see. We tried to find this out yesterday, and I'm not sure if it's posted yet. Um, I don't think I saw the pitching rotation for the Cajuns as I was caught off guard. Uh, caught off guard last week. So we'll see if they posted it uh, for tomorrow yet. Not yet. No preview. Just, oh, we got the preview. All right, let's see who's pitching. If we got it yet. Let's see here. Uh, Andrew Herman is pitching for the Cajuns against uh, Cam Hill. Chase Morgan going Friday and Carson Fluno going Saturday. So that was the Cajuns pitching rotation for most of uh, the season. Uh, well, certainly once they got rolling, basically. Um, so the, it, that's important for the Cajuns. They want to stay hot, move up into that, you know, top. It's going to be tough to be top 30 if you beat South Alabama two out of three or even all three. But you can be mid 30s heading into the Sunbelt Commerce tournament. If you win that, you might be in the top top 30. Uh, Division One baseball had the Cajuns as a two seed in the Starkville regional at number 14. Wow. I mean, wow. That's huge difference. Huge difference compared to others sending them to like College Station and AM going up against, you know, former number one of the season. South Alabama, meanwhile, needs to win to just get into the tournament. There's a huge five-way tie um, at that at that spot. Let me make sure that's correct. That's what I heard today. And, or maybe there's five teams for four spots. Let me see. So you got Coastal Carolina. Yeah, it's, it's five teams for four spots. Um, Carolina, South Alabama, Old Dominion, all tied 13 and 14, Texas state and Georgia state are 12 and 15. So you got five teams, four spots. Uh, so we shall see, you know, coastal Carolina is going to coastal Carolina is going to Marshall. They're not making the tournament so they could play spoiler, I guess. Uh, Texas State's going to Southern Miss. They're looking to really secure a, 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 a big time at large berth for sure. Wood mentioned uh, Baseball America had five teams going to the NCAA tournament, five Sun Belt teams, and D1 Baseball had four. James Madison was the last one out. All right. uh, let's check out the rest of uh, the schedule for this weekend. As we mentioned, well, we mentioned a little bit there, right? Cajun, South Alabama, Texas State is going up against Southern Miss. Who knows about Texas State? Taking two out of three from Troy and then losing on the road to McNeese. Uh, at the very least, it's been a very disappointing season for uh, the Bobcats. Meanwhile, Southern Miss is playing uh, really well again. I think that was a big win for them against Ole Miss. Uh, they carry in some momentum. And... You know, I, I'm saying the Cajuns go in and win this conference tournament. Southern Miss could finish second. They already have a top. If they sweep Texas State, they'll be top 25 RPI-wise. I don't think they could host, but boy, they'll be top 20. If they win the Sunbelt Conference Tournament and finish second, they'll be a top 20 RPI. Uh, James Madison is at Troy. 
Big series for both squads. James Madison is right now on the bubble. I don't even think Troy is on the bubble. Troy's got an RPI of like 48. I know they're third in a tough conference. I think both Baseball America and D1 Baseball had them in. But I, I, you're sitting there at 48. That is, that's nervous time. You need to may you need to have a Cajuns kind of run in the conference tournament. And what helped the Cajuns is I think they beat Coastal twice is what helped the Cajuns. Uh, Old Dominion is at Georgia State. So Georgia State's actually got a shot. We'll see. That's not the easiest thing, but they're at home. And again, the big news is Georgia State's getting a new ballpark, which is going to be done 2026. Uh, App State hosting Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern brushed off the Cajun sweep with a win on uh, Tuesday. They're at App State. They're kind of fighting for seeding there. And I guess it's apropos Arkansas State and um, ULM playing against each other, and neither one of them is going to the postseason uh, tournament. Uh, so we got lots to do. Uh, final weekend of, of the year. Uh, again, I'm going out of town, as it turns out. Uh, looking forward to it. It is it is uh, what it is. Um, nephew's graduating and the PGA Championship, all the same place. Uh, we get to watch it from... Uh, and we get to watch it on the phone or the computer, uh, but uh, I will I will be uh, I will be at the Thursday ball game, finish up lo- uh, finish up locked on for the week, and then probably be able to do locked on Sunday and uh, or from Monday and Tuesday before I come home. But I will be out of town. All right, uh, uh, looking forward to that. You can bet. You can bet on that one. All right. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in again, 1,220 subscriptions. Really appreciate it. Please continue to subscribe and tell people that, uh, about the Sunbelt lockdown Sunbelt. I know it's not the biggest of all conferences, but everyone's really passionate about it. And I appreciate uh, all the support, especially from, uh, all the others that seem to do that have their own podcasts in the conference. It is a, uh, it is a group uh, effort. Uh, All right. Thanks very much. Once again, I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Thanks so much for tuning in to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Have a sensational Thursday, everybody. And we'll talk to you again on Friday.